Hey guys, I just wanted to take time to make this video. I've been in this industry 22 years, and I've seen a lot of good guys, a lot of honest guys that actually want to help people that care about the trade and that are just good mechanics, tradesmen in general. But I've also seen a trend towards a lot of high pressure sales, um, over marketing, uh, ridiculous, unnecessary upselling. So this might be part of a series, but I just wanted to let the average homeowner, you know, regular customer get some ideas on, on just when things aren't right and how not to get scammed. So the real thing that prompted this video is I met a kid, I, I interviewed him for a position and he told me the last company that he was with Every house that they went to, the goal was to upsell by $785. I said, wow, man, that, that's pretty crazy. That's, that's a lot of money. He's like, oh, but, you know, we offer financing and uh, they're just paying a small amount over time. So while I do understand that it's a small monthly payment, maybe perhaps some of those things needed to be done, I don't know about you, but I can't really lose $785. And then the interest on top of that is probably going to be close to a thousand, if not more. So the first thing I'll warn you about is when you see large billboards, large trucks, not, not all, I'm not going to, you know, put everyone in that category. Usually those guys are going to charge you a lot of money. You'd be better off in most cases finding a local plumber out of, uh, you know, Google or, or whatever, and just kind of finding someone with some good reviews, a smaller outfit. They're less likely to come in there with, you know, high pressure sales, high pressure upsells. A lot of them will appreciate your business more. And with the internet being what it is and everything, you can see by, through a person's reviews whether or not they're good or bad. Now, you can argue the same can be done with a larger company, but a lot of times they'll incentivize good reviews for discounts or, or other perks and, and things like that. They also deal with a higher volume of customers, so it's a lot easier for those negative reviews to kind of get buried. So that's the first thing I'd warn you about. Just try and go with a smaller outfit when you can. And like I said, this is not a blanket statement to classify everyone with a large company, large billboards as crooks. It's just customarily what I've noticed over the last, you know, 20 something years, 22 years in this industry. With that being said, and in connection to that is the upsell. So yeah, certain things, they, they make good sense. You know, if if it's a heating coal and it's an expansion tank, well, obviously you're you're probably going to want to change the fast fill and the relief valve. Now, I know some of that jargon might go above some of your guys' heads, but there are certain things that should be changed together that are complementary, and it would be a disservice to the customer to change one and not the other. And any good mechanic will address that there because it'll it'll be a callback. You know, maybe I fix one part and in, you know, a week or so, the other part fails. But there are also upsells. Now, this is going to require some detective work on your part, maybe a quick Google search to just kind of see what's what. You know, a lot of times companies will scare you with, oh, it's going to flood. It's going to cause a fire. This is going to blow up your house, etc. And I'm trying to think of a particular upsell that I've seen just usually it's just a lot of unnecessary work. It's hard to really classify this in in a way that's kind of like a general thing to look out for. But usually it comes in the form of like unnecessary work, changing things that don't need to be changed, pointing to a random part, uh, you know, on your let's say your water heater or heating system and just saying, Oh, this needs to be changed too, et cetera, et cetera. 
So that kind of goes in line with you're going to want to start off looking for someone who's honest, looking, doing your research with the Google reviews. But I'd be very cautious of just someone who comes into your house and it's like, oh, this needs to be done. Oh, that needs to be done. Oh, this, this, that, and the other thing. A lot of these guys, service techs are paid on commission. So, you know, I, I'd just be weary of that. You know, it's bad enough you have a plumbing emergency and, you know, it, it can be a scary thing. It's going to cost you money. Maybe you had some flooding going on. Maybe you're dealing with an insurance company. It's a, it's a sensitive time. The last thing you really want is someone coming in there and making it worse. And, and I've seen that happen, and it's very unfortunate. With that being said, also, the other thing is know your hourly rates to a certain degree. I mean, in most metropolitan areas, the hourly range of a plumber could fu fluctuate between, I've seen as little as $125 an hour to maybe $300 an hour. Anything above that is, in most places, excessive. Now, you know, obviously there, there may be some places where there's scarcity issues or you need some major commercial work done that, you know, not too many people can do. It's a rare case where that labor rate's gonna be over 300. Um, also, a quick Google search is how long does something really take to do? You know, I've heard of people getting charged four or $5,000 to change a hot water heater, a common residential hot water heater. Now that's something that, you know, usually it can take maybe three, four hours, right? On a bad case, but in a good working condition, you can get in and out of there in about an hour, an hour and a half. A lot, you know, a water heater, a 40 gallon water heater nowadays is about seven, eight hundred dollars. So think about it. You know, where are those other thousands coming from? You know, a, a lot of times a helper will be billed out as a mechanic. So you'll be getting double billed. There, there's so many ways, and that's why I do believe this is going to become a series. But those are just some common things to look out for. There's going to be a lot more, but if you follow those basic rules and do a quick Google search, see how much something costs. If someone tells you, you know, that particular instance, the hot water heater, oh, this is a $3,000 hot water heater. Okay, you know, privately go and take a look. Say, hey, you know, we have the technology now to really get pricing and you know, even though you'll see pricing fluctuate online, it's all basically around the same place. You can get a good idea of what's going on. And maybe you have a unique circumstance going on. I personally couldn't think of one, but maybe you do. And if your uh, price that has been given to you is astronomical, I would just simply question why. A lot of these things too, these searches and stuff, I would just do discreetly. You're not looking to offend the tech because, hey, maybe there's there's a legitimate reason for certain upsells or certain, you know, high prices. But for yourself, you just want to protect yourself. And, and if it makes sense to you, then, hey, that's great. Go with it. And you also didn't alienate the person who's going to be doing work in your house. Uh, plumbers, you know, it's a very stressful job. I always say that you know, it's a job that finds you. Very rarely people set out in, in their life to be a plumber. You know, maybe you're a multi-generational plumber and you're taking over business. That's a different story. But for a guy like myself who's a first-generation plumber, you know, it's kind of something that you, you get into. And there's good days, bad days, and there's, you know, good customers. And there's also, you know, more challenging customers, people that will, you know, basically practically sit on your lap watching you work. They'll question everything you do, but not in a I want to be informed way, but more like, hey, I just am lonely and I want to talk. <laughs> so, you know, I, I hope some of these tips helped. My goal moving forward with this channel is not just to inform you on how to avoid getting scammed or, or anything like that, but also just to help you navigate 
through your plumbing problems, maybe down the road do some you know, product reviews or things like that. But either way, it's a great trade. It's done well for me. Um, you know, even though I don't deal too much with the tools nowadays, but I, you know, having done it for so long, I'd like to share some of that knowledge with, with you guys out there. And, you know, hopefully maybe some of you younger plumbers too kind of encourage you to get into the trades. Uh, we, we definitely need more trades people now. And um, it's a good living. It's a good way to support a family. So I hope this has helped you guys. Have a great one. Take care. Bye.